Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. Today I would like to walk you through a specific business scenario that deals with three requirements that needed to be solved. I will show you the solutions that I came up with. Uh, there are a few gaps that I will be talking about later. So let's take a look at three requirements, three main requirements for that business process. The first requirement is the ability to receive ungraded inventory from a vendor at zero cost. And the second requirement is the ability to consume that received ungraded inventory and receive the graded inventory instead. And the third and last main requirement is ability to issue purchase order to pay the vendor based on the graded inventory quantities. So whatever we received in a second step, we should be paying for it in the third. So let's take a look at the first requirement. The first instinct here is to use consignment orders that are available standard in Dynamics 365. The issue with that approach is the item number that you add on the consignment order is the one that you will be paying for to your vendor. In our case, that is not applicable because we receive a graded inventory item, let's say item A, but we are paying for a number of graded inventory items, let's say items B, C, and D. So what was the solution in my case? It was a purchase order with zero dollar price. Very typical uh, solution prior to Dynamics 365 consignment orders. We can use an item that has a standard cost in a specific site at zero dollars, or we can make sure that every time we receive that item, we have a zero dollar purchase. <clears throat> We're gonna go and open our purchase orders. We will then create a new purchase order. We will use vendor 1003 and we will add an item 150. Uh, 100, item 150 represents stock inventory of ungraded eggs, for example. So this is our ungraded item that we are receiving and we will receive it in warehouse 11, and the quantity will be 120. We will go then and confirm that purchase order and post product receipt. The physical and financial cost of that receipt transaction will remain zero dollars. You can achieve that by using one of the two following methods. If your item is set up with actual costs such as FIFO or weighted average, you have to make sure that your PO has zero dollar purchase price and your invoice match, matches to that. If your item is set up to use standard cost, you have to make sure that the standard cost was defined and activated for zero dollars for a specific site. But as I mentioned previously, using a consignment order, which is new functionality that was recently added in Dynamics 365 is not an option because we pay a vendor for different sets of items from what we receive because we receive ungraded item 150, but our purchase order will be for graded items. So that was the solution for the first step, receive ungraded inventory from a vendor at the zero cost. The second requirement that needed to be solved was to consume ungraded inventory and receive graded inventory. That was completed by using a batch order for a planning item. Let me show you in a system. I will navigate to our production order screen and create a new batch order for my planning item 100. I'm gonna say yes to copy an active formula and I will create it for a quantity of 120, same as the received quantity of ungraded inventory. If we look closer at the release product 100, we can see that the production type for that product was set to planning item. So that item will never be received into inventory, but rather be used to plan for, to receive all the core cool products that are associated with our formula. If you look at the formula, which is that standard 100 one, we see that the first line for our formula is to consume an item 150. So that was that ungraded inventory that we received in the previous step. And if we look at the core products associated with that formula, 
we see that we have three potential co-products, 201, 202, and 203, which are the item numbers that represent graded inventory that we will receive or report as finished at the end of our production order. So now we are ready to create a new batch order. We're going to click Create. The new batch order has been created and I will quickly walk through an estimation step. I will then start the production order, which will consume my item 150, which will consume my ungraded inventory quantity. And then we will move on to the report as finished step. Because we created this batch order for a planning item, we see that we cannot report it as finished. Instead, we report as finished a certain quantity of our co-products, which represent our graded X. We received 120 ungraded X from our vendor. We consume those 120 ungraded X whenever we started that batch order and posted a picking list journal for. And now when we are reporting that batch order as finished, it's time to for us to enter the quantities of finished cop products, which represent our graded X. So now we see that we have three possible X sizes. We have medium, large, and extra large sizes. And let's say we received, at the end of this grayed out process, we received 60 uh, medium X, we received 50 large X, and we received 10 extra large X. And let's say there was no scrap, so there was no crack X, so we basically had zero uh, quantity loss. In this case, once we enter those quantity, we're going to click OK to report our batch order as finished. So now our batch order is reported as finished. So that was the solution that we came up with for the second requirement, which would basically require us to consume ungraded inventories, so consume 120 of ungraded eggs and receive graded inventory in our possession, which was basically 60, 50, and 10 of graded X of different sizes. Now, the third requirement was to issue purchase order to pay the vendor based on the graded inventory quantities. Remember, we received three egg types, uh, items 201, 202, and 203 into our inventory by means of reporting the batch order as finished. And now we need to issue a PO to pay for those quantities. The solution that I came up with was actually to create a subcontract purchase order uh, as the part of the uh, as, as a part of the formula let's take a look at it in the system if you if you look closely at our formula we see that instead of having just one item that represents our ungraded X we also had three more line items that were set up as formula lines with type vendor and we had a default vendor associated with them that actually matched to the vendor of uh, PO in our first step. We can see on the right hand side that we have one purchase order number that ends with 126 and that was for the vendor 1003 which was an eight supply company. So that purchase order was created at the time of our uh, estimation of the batch order and now we can go review that order, modify it and actually invoice it. I'm going to click on the purchase order number. I will then go and put it into the edit mode. And then in a manual step, I have to make sure that I'm matching the quantities that I actually received as call products on my batch order. So remember, we received 60 medium X, 50 large X, and 10 extra large X. If you look closely here, the items are actually service items. They are not stocked items uh, as they opposed to that 201, 202, 203. There are items 301, 302, 303 that represents graded act payment instead of the stocked item. So we're just now creating a PO for a service item so we can issue an invoice and pay our vendor. Once we enter the correct quantity that matched to the co-product quantities that we received, or we will then move through a standard life cycle of a purchase order. We will first confirm PO. And because those are service items, we don't really need to post product receipt. We can move straight to invoice step.
when posting our purchase or invoice, make sure that we are posting it for order quantity, not product receipt quantity. We can verify that the quantities are correct in this line section over here. We will enter invoice number. We're gonna perform our matching status check. So it will change from not performed to passed. And now we are ready to post PO invoice. So now we have a successfully invoice purchase order that will generate a payment to our vendor based on received co-product quantities and the corresponding unit prices. Now I would like to talk about the enhancements that are needed to make it a complete solution. The first one is we need to create a vendor matching that would ensure that the vendor on that PO that we use to receive ungraded inventory matches to a vendor that is used on the PO for the subcontracting. Remember that we have created the PO for vendor 1003 in the first step, but uh, the vendor that was used to create subcontract PO with those service uh, products was actually defined by the formula. So we have to make sure that the formula is using the correct vendor to match to the vendor that we use on the first PO to receive ungraded inventory. This validation doesn't exist, so I had to manually enter the same vendor on the formula and on the PO that I have created in the first step. So that enhancement is needed, vendor matching. The second enhancement that will be needed is to create some sort of validation on entered car product quantities. If you remember, we consumed 120 ungraded eggs um, in our picking list for the, uh, for the batch order. But whenever we report it as finished, I could have entered not 60, 50, 10 to equal to 120. I could have entered 60, 60, and 100, with, which will equal to a total of 220 graded X, which is not really possible if you're consuming only 120 ungraded X. So we have to create a validation that matches and ensures that the total quantity of all the co-products that we report as finished is not greater than the total quantity of ungraded eggs that we consumed in our picking list. And the third valid, and the third enhancement that will be needed is to transfer the quantities of co-products that we did on our batch order to that subcontractor PO, right? You remember when the, the PO was created, the quantities were generic 120 uh, for all three lines. So what the enhancements will do is we'll look at the quantities for each co-product that we reported as finished and transfer that quantity to that corresponding PO. So whenever we open it, the quantities are already matched and we didn't have to enter and match these quantities manually. So those are the identified limitations to the process. Again, this process is completely out of box in Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. I wanted to show you a few methods that I used to actually solve the requirements that we discussed right up here. And I hope you found some value in that video and that explanation. And until the next time.